Hello, and welcome to the VTOL VR F45 multifunction display tutorial. Um, this, will be, this will be a base overview on the basic functionality of the multifunction display. Um, since the multifunction display se is what separates uh, the F45 with the other two uh, aircrafts in this game, I'll try and be as slow and thorough as possible because it is the main so source of confusion for a lot of players. That said, hope you enjoy. Okay, let's start with this top bar right here. First, right here where it says layout set, you have the option to set and get four different presets. For example, if, say, I put um, the EO targeting panel right here and the comms panel right here, and then I want to save that as a preset, I can tap and hold preset three, for example, and it will say saved right there. Now, I can mess up whatever I have here. And if I ever want to get that back to where I had before, just quickly tap preset three and it goes right back. You can set as many of these presets as you want and they stay in between rounds, meaning you can, you can uh, set a preset in one day and then come back on a new day and have the preset already be there. Directly next to that is the clear waypoint button. If you have any waypoints, for example, if I request landing permission. Alpha one, one, tower, copy, fly heading zero, zero, four. You can expect runway zero, seven. You can see. Let's mute him. Okay, you can see there's the little waypoint right there. If you ever want to get rid of that, just click on clear waypoint, that button right there. Directly below that is altitude mode. This will switch the ASL on your HUD from uh, ASL, meaning sea level, to radar, meaning radar. For example, just to demonstrate this, if I go above these mountains right here, If I go above these mountains, you can see that my altitude is 12,000 feet in ASL mode, meaning we are 12,000 feet above sea level. If we switch that to RDR mode, radar mode, we see that switches to around 9,000 feet above sea level, which will change drastically once we get over this mountain. I've down a little bit. Now we are 5,000 feet, but instead of 5,000 feet above sea level, we are 5,000 feet, or in this case, 3,000 feet above the ground wherever we are in relation to the ground our ship. So it's not sea level, it's the ground. Just remember that. That's the difference between radar and sea level mode. Next, we have the warnings and panel, kind of. So, if you have any warnings on your, uh, say you deploy your landing gear when you're high up in the air. Why is it not giving me the warning? It's a little strange. Maybe because, there we go. It'll say landing gear and this master caution will flash. If you know what you're doing and you don't want to be warned anymore, you can click this master caution and it will dismiss. Directly below the master caution, whenever a missile is being fired at you, it will say missile launch warning right here. This doesn't, this isn't uh, hostile missiles, this is any missile. So if a friendly fires a missile, you will still hear the warning right here. So make sure you listen out for your friends calling out Fox 2, Fox 3, rifle, things like that. That means they fired the missile, not the enemy. Next, this AB, that's afterburner. So if afterburner is engaged, which means your throttle is more than 80% over that hump, You've initiated afterburner, which makes you go faster, but you burn significantly more fuel. 
and directly above that is when you are locked onto a to a target and you and you are ready to shoot this warning right here will say shoot and you that means that you it, you're fairly confident that once you fire it'll hit the target right here the swap button this will put whatever's on this side on that side and whatever's on this side that side so we'll just swap the displays seen right here next here countermeasures this is how many chaffs and flares you have left in your aircraft so if you click this button right here that's your countermeasures button you can see that that number goes down as you're ejecting chaffs and flares next these two well, these two buttons will affect what's over here. So, if we click fuel, it will show fuel and information. If you click autopilot, it will show autopilot. If you click fuel, it will show you the time that you were, um, I think, oh, I, this is what this means. The, uh, the time at your current speed that, the EST time is the time at your current speed that you'll be able to go. So, if you're full throttling this with afterburner you'll see that at this speed I will most likely be able to go another 8 minutes and 40 and 35 seconds before I run out of fuel or 80 uh, nautical miles that's what that means fuel drain that means that you I'm losing 391.2 liters per minute and this max TWR is the maximum thrust to weight ratio um, that you can that it, that uh, that can be ha that you can have when you're out of fuel I believe and then here is your external internal and external fuel tanks this is the capacity and this number right here is how many liters how many liters of fuel you have that's the top bar let's go to this bottom bar we will go into each of the modules in depth in their own videos, but as a base rundown, the you can click on any of these functions. For now, I'm just going to click at random, and you can display them on these top displays. If you want to fill these two spots right here, click this arrow right here, hide subportals, and it will expand it. You can do this for all of the displays. If you want to bring it back up, just click the corresponding arrows. If you want to not only expand it, but re completely replace this display, making it huge, you can click these maximize buttons, which will make it big. You can only have two maximized uh, displays. Next, these sub portals, these are pretty important. Um, you can have other um, types of displays open at a time. Most displays will just, in the sub portal menu, will say where, what, what it is, so in this case, GPS targets, that you can switch between the main display and the sub portals just by clicking on them. Some displays, when they're in a sub portal, will actually retain their information, like the uh, radar warning receiver and the um, EO targeting and these sub portals can be manipulated and when and whenever you click a sub portal it replaces the main display which is with whatever you're clicking on when the sub portals are hidden uh, ie expanded they turn into these little tabs so they are still accessible but they are just hidden in these tabs when they're maximized, you have not only two additional tabs for the two subportals that you are hiding, but one additional tab. So you have five tabs in total if a view is maximized. And one last thing before we note, some sensors will, or some displays will allow you to click this button, toggle SOI. That means that you can control it by grabbing the joystick and using the smaller joystick on the joystick. 
you can control, it's probably easier if I show you the nav panel. If I make this SOI, you'll see it has a green border and I can use the joystick to move around. The functionality of this will be different for every um, for every display. That's the base rundown. In the next few videos, we will go over each of these uh, displays in more detail. Thank you for watching. Have an amazing day.